Hey. Oh. Now, today is DI Rinse Resin Replacement Day. That was heavy. If you're not using a deionized system to purify your water, you're making a big mistake because especially washing an RV, using anything but DI water is basically a catastrophe waiting for you. You're gonna get spots. So getting a DI system is really imperative. If you own a, a coach such as the Newell, they actually plumb in a DI canister system into their coaches built in. They have small little canisters that have replaceable cartridges. I choose on our coach to use a portable tank. This one is from DI Rinse. It's the Pro 50. It holds a half a cubic foot of resin mix. It is good for what they claim to be about 2,000 gallons. Your mileage will vary depending on where you are in the country, how hard your water is coming out of the tap. But by and large, I'm gonna tell you that they have a very, very good quality product. This was purchased for me in August of 2019. That's two years plus ago. I've used it to wash our 43 and 45 foot coaches. I've used it to wash my trucks, my cars, the windows, patio furniture. And what's good about having this large canister is you don't have to worry about turning it on and turning it off or putting it into bypass mode so that you're having to worry about using too much of the deionized water. Some people have to replace these filters so often that it becomes a real hassle, especially if you're on the road. And that's what I like. I put this on the coach, throw it in the bay, strap it down to my soft water tank, and I'm off to the races, and I don't have to worry about this for a long time, certainly never on the road, no matter how long our road trips are. I just received a one cubic foot replacement resin bag from DI Rinse. This guy's great, he's in Northern Tennessee, just spoke to him this morning, uh, really nice guy. Uh, just got a couple quick tips on how to, to remove the old resin and replace it with the new resin, once again, this is a half a cubic foot. This is a whole cubic foot, and this was over $200. Uh, I think the replacement was like $240. Uh, this right now on their website is $400, and it comes with everything you see here with the exception of my Quick Connect hose, which I'll go through in a minute and show you what it is. But this is the bypass system. Now, you'll notice here on the valves, let's get in close and I wanna show you something. You'll notice these valves are upside down. When the tank comes to you, these valves will be on the top. And that's a problem for clearance on our coach bays. And when this slides in, these valves get precariously close to the bay door. So I don't want that to ever hang up. And I figured that this will protect the valves more. So what I did, these are screwed on couplings and I took these off removed it, reversed it, and put them upside down. And these valves are in the bypass position this way. So this closes the water channel off and it will circulate right from the input to the output and never even go through the tank. Or you leave them in the flow through position and the water will come in and chase itself through the DI resin and come right out of the output. So that's the way that works. I just leave it in the open position all the time. It helps it drain easier when I disconnect it. You're about to see why I love my quick connect system. Don't go away. I also wanna show you this. <laughs> this is a plant stand. It's a high capacity plant stand, supports 500 pounds. It supports me. Okay, don't do that. But, see, I know you want one of those. Got it on Amazon, did my research, found a good quality one. Here's why I like these Quick Connects. You'll notice I have Quick Connects even at home. So look how easy it is for me to qu Quick Connect my DI system into my house, right? Just like that. And if I want to put my garden hose in there, how about that? What's really great too is I'm not screwing down couplings over and over and twisting my hose. So it's a quick deal. One of the cool things about this company is they send you a TDS meter. You need that total dissolve solid meter. Let's get that. Oh, <laughs> just happened to have it with me. Now, 
here's the thing. You gotta test the water. I'm gonna guess we're a little too high. That's why I ordered the new resin mix. But anyway, it's a real simple meter to use. You turn it on, make sure it's on PPM. When you flow the water, do not, do not gush it like that. These are not designed for high flow because it bypasses all the capabilities of the resin to do its job. So just let it flow slowly. And I'm going to fill that up enough to dip it in. You don't submerse it anything past that red line. I put the red line on, but you're basically hitting that sensor down there. So let's check it out. Really good, 105. That's not bad. I'm actually gonna flush it a little bit more because I suspect that there's probably water in there that's been sitting and it's probably super pure. So let's flush it a little bit more and see where we're at. Be right back. Let's see what we got now. What do you think? I think it's gonna be higher. Should be higher. It better be higher. I waited all this time to get that new mix. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna push the hold button. 290. So what happened was the stagnant water, if you will, the sitting water that was in the the bed was getting nice and deionized, so it came out super pure, which is another testament to the fact is you gotta run this slow. So let's do an experiment here. I'm gonna run this fast, and I'm gonna let it flush all over the place. Okay, let's test that, 288. Now remember, one of the things I like about the, the Lowe's Greenworks pressure washer, it, it runs out at like 1.2 or 1.4 GPM, so that's not pumping out much at all. Keeping in mind that a garden hose will put out 15 gallons a minute or above depending on the diameter of hose and your pressure. Um, and that's enough to kind of overrun the ability for a DI tank to actually remove the impurities. So let's just run a kind of a trickle in here and let's see where we're at. Yeah, let's see. Two, 294. So it's not doing any better. So time to change those resin beads. Let's get on it. So you know when I'm breaking camp and I have this DI tank, or for that matter, even the soft water tank, what I'll do is I'll disconnect that, make sure the valves are open, and then I'll put this in a strategic location or even on a picnic table and turn these upside down, and it gives them a chance to drain out. If nothing else, it makes the tank a lot lighter to carry around. I also kind of do it that in case it was to tip over in the bay, uh, it's not gonna be dumping out a lot of water in my bay but uh, I haven't had a problem in two years. And I just put a uh, large two inch strap around both tanks, secure them together with a fast tech buckle and it, it works great. It, it secures them nice and tight and they just don't tip over because they support each other. So let's, uh, let's get this drained out and then we'll get to taking the neck off. I'm just gonna take and brace this a little bit. I'm gonna guess it's not on there too much. Yep, that's it. I'm gonna Reattach this. All right. So let's take this top off. I know there's going to be a down tube in here, so you want to be very careful not to twist and turn and possibly crack that off. And there we go. The guy, uh, Greg at, at DI Rinse, says don't worry about it getting absolutely crammed up to the neck because you don't have to pack it down. But you'd have to be careful because this tube has to get back down in and through the media. So if you pack and pack and pack this down, it may put a lot of stress on this plastic tube and I do not want to crack that off. So everything looks good, the seal looks good. Clean off the threads, looks good there. And I can't even see the resin, so I'm not really worried about getting that much in there, but I'm certainly gonna fill it up to the neck and it needs a lot more than it has in there right now. I just have to figure out a way to drain this. He recommended putting it in a pillowcase, but I'm gonna get a, uh, like a drop cloth drain the resin into that drop cloth and that'll kind of capture it without letting it run. This stuff just goes everywhere. All right, so let's get on that. Have I told you how much I love these quick connects? I'm not sure I have or not, but I'm guessing I have. That's right. All right. No comments from the peanut gallery on if I'm gonna make this mess or not. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, let's see. <laughs> oh yeah, there's still a lot in there. Filled up that bag pretty well. That was nice. Not that it really matters much, but I'm just gonna do this if nothing else to make the capture easier because this stuff does go through everything. 
small holes and whatnot. This is kind of cathartic in a way. All right, let's get the hose and give it a little wash out. You don't have to get it perfectly clean, but I'm certainly gonna make it easy on myself. Clean as a whistle. Get yourself a clean tank. Fiberglass, light. This worked out great. Bed sheet, wife is gonna be so upset. I don't think we're gonna be using this tonight. Pretty golden. Come here, check it out. Mmm, yummy. All right, that goes out to the trash. Next up, getting the resin into that canister. Hope that goes good. Call it pessimism or whatever you want. My wife's a great optimist, but I've also worn out my butt kicking machine a few too many times. So I'm gonna use adjuncts to help me. I always knew I could use this photo stool for something. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel good about this at all. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know if I'm feeling any better about this or not. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> this is gonna be the hardest part. Oh yeah, like I said, told you. I rethink this. Elizabethan dog collar, potentially for the win. Round two. It's not like this stuff is 200 bucks a bag or anything like that. Tamp it down a little bit. Right about now, there's probably some of you who are saying, yeah, those canisters are starting to look pretty good at this point. I guess if I was really curious, I probably should have weighed that bag before I did this. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'll give you a look and see how far I filled it. It's within a finger distance down, not too much space underneath that neck. Again, you can't get it packed in there too tight or else this, this rod will have a hard time getting down in through the media threads cleaned. Little plumber's o-ring grease. Never hurt anything. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if my pack job was too much. Now, see that canister up there? That neck? Good thing I didn't pack it in there too tight. I don't think I'd have had a chance to get it on there, but looks like I nailed it. Luck over skill any day. Yeah. Doing good. Seated. Give that thing a quick twist that's all you need doesn't have to be super tight it's got a nice o-ring nice high quality abs or some type of poly resin only hand tighten nuts yeah by the way if you do decide to reverse your valves like i did you'll have to swap these inlets and outlets around because you don't want to reverse the flow this has to go in the correct way all right so this is the inlet so it'll say right here downflow inlet upflow inlet so down up and you don't want to reverse that that's got to be the output what you do is you take this out and you swap these two otherwise your fittings will be reversed that way the innie is the innie and the audi is the audi not to be confused with a bmw <sighs> let's go test this have i told you how much oh <laughs> never mind let's flow some water it's on at a pretty low flow just to give it a chance to settle in there and get filled up. Here it comes. I can hear the air coming out. I'm kind of curious what the initial reading's gonna be. We've got flow. I'm just kind of curious. Let's test this. Water's clear too. <laughs> Two. 
we got pure water, folks. Yep, it's pure, like I can tell. Uh, let's check the second batch here. Zero, <laughs> zero complete particleless water. Let's turn the volume up a bit, and test it again. Let's test this water at full force. Let's check this out. Oh man. Full blast. Zero TDS. I love it. Awesome. This is the secret. Spot free washing. You've got to get one of these. Yeah, it's expensive, 400 bucks. But you know, the fact is you're going to be able to do your own truck and motorhome, rinse it down after the soaping, and it's not going to leave any spots. I'm more than pleased. So we went from nearly 300, even at a trickle, down to zero, complete deionization. I love it. Okay, enjoy. Get out there and clean your water and uh, have safe travels. I love the fact that I'm getting all this great input. I'm getting good suggestions. So thank you very much and I appreciate all of you subscribing and tell a friend or two out there and I'd love to hear back from you. Take care, safe travels. <laughs>